Now, another topic to discuss, one that garners more controversy than many other issues, uh, and that's the protection provided by COVID infection as compared to COVID vaccine. So there's been a large amount of research on this, and there's certainly some conflicting findings, which can make it confusing. Now, in trying to answer the question about natural immunity versus vaccine immunity, that is immunity from infection versus immunity from the vaccine, there's two main ways that we can evaluate the evidence available. So the first is to look at the immune response inside the body. And the second is to look at how that immune response works in the real world. So starting with the body's immune response, it's important to understand one part of the immune system that we often hear about, and that's antibodies. Now we hear about antibodies as they're one of the easiest components to test for with a simple blood test. But it's important to remember that there's much more to our immune system than just antibodies. So think of antibodies as the bullets in your immune armory. So bullets are important, but so are tanks, bombers, missiles, warships. You don't want to go to war with just bullets. You want the whole arsenal. And when we study natural versus vaccine-induced immunity for those components of the immune system, we find often that people with natural immunity seem to have inconsistent immune responses. So while some people possess that entire arsenal of the immune protection, others lack a critical part, B cells. This is in the bone marrow. They're cells that maintain memory of the infection long-term to fight it down the line. Now, additionally, there seems to be an association between the severity of the infection, how sick you get, and how robust and long-lasting your immune response is. Now, in the end, the results are simply inconsistent as to whether natural infection develops the immune response necessary to sufficiently prevent infection. But we can also take the next step and look at how natural infection and vaccine-induced immunity play out in the real world. And here too, we see conflicting studies. So on the one hand, you have a study out of Kentucky, and this looked at residents of Kentucky and found that among those who'd previously been infected, the vaccine cut down their risk of reinfection more than twofold. Now, in contrast, there was a recent preprint study out of Israel that seemed to show that natural immunity may actually be more protective than vaccine-induced immunity. Now, importantly, that study is preprint. It hasn't been peer-reviewed yet, uh, and it does contain some potential areas of bias, such as those who seek out vaccine may also be more likely to seek out testing and be found to be positive. And nonetheless, it's an interesting addition to the body of research. And a final twist to add to all this is the future ability for natural immunity versus vaccine immunity to fight against variants of the virus. Several studies have demonstrated that the targeted immunity provided by the vaccine actually works better against circulating variants than the more general immunity provided by infection with previous strains of COVID. So how do we wrap our heads around all this? Well, first, the scientific process is not always neat and tidy. And there's, that's certainly the case here, but we can draw some clear conclusions. Sure, there is some conflicting research, but in general, it seems that there may be inconsistency in how robust immunity is obtained through natural infection. What many studies have demonstrated definitively is that the combination of natural infection and vaccine immunity, if you've gotten infected in the past, also getting vaccinated, that's the strongest protection of all. Now, given that we have a vaccine that's exceeded, exceedingly studied and incredibly safe, it makes sense to recommend that everyone get vaccinated regardless of past infection. And even if you've had a confirmed infection in the past, the vaccine will give you an added boost of protection and more consistency and reliability in your immunity now, as well as to future variants. And of course, there's no better time to get vaccinated than now with the state program extended to get $100 for getting vaccinated. So make the choice, protect yourself, your family, and your community, and get your vaccine today.